Hello everyone, and we got good crypto news for you. Yes, that's right. Bitcoin is back above 71, breaking on 70 UK, and I do believe it'll pass the all-time high of 73.8 very, very soon. The next target, I believe, is 80K, and I think we will be at above 80K uh, at the halving, despite a lot of doubt from some people. And we're going to actually uh, discuss that right now, because it kind of needs to be above 80K because that's how much mining costs right now. And obviously, miners don't want to be unprofitable um, for very long after the halving. So miners, for miners to remain profitable and continuing their mining operations, the Bitcoin price must rise above 80,000 post halving. I think that's based on average electricity cost. Obviously, in some countries, it's significantly less. So some miners might want to keep operations but if you're looking at the average, you're looking at like Marathon, Riot, and a lot of these big mining companies, they might have a lot of trouble if it's not above 80K because the hash rate has continued to grow. And yes, you're thinking that like, you know, some miners will just turn off their machines and the hash rate will go down and the, then mining won't cost as much. There's a lot of investment in those machines and I don't know if that many people will be able to eat their losses. And if a lot of the big guys have to eat their losses, that definitely won't happen. Right now, it looks like the average mining cost for Ant Miner S19 XPs will is around 40K and it's going to be 80K after the halving. I do think that includes all costs. So this guy said, Ki Jung Yu, Bitcoin mining costs are set to double by the end of the month after the halving, jumping from 40K to 80K for S19 XPs, commonly utilized by US miners. After the May 2020 halving, the price of miners will continue to uh, mine profitably, rose above 30,000, but the price of Bitcoin also pumped to a new all-time high of 69K. If you judge by that ratio, then, you know, when we get to our all-time high, if 80K is the new uh, minimum and the maximum's over twice 80K, you're looking at roughly 180K as the top, which I do believe is possible. I'm still looking at about 150 as my guess, but 180 is definitely possible. So the average Bitcoin mining cost as of April 6th is 49,902, and the Bitcoin price is above 70 uh, at this writing. After the happening on April 20th, average mining cost will rise above 80K. And I think like 80K, we might get stuck around there for a little while, but even at that, I don't think it'll be that long because you need significant profits to bolster that industry. And there's too much in, invested in Bitcoin mining for people to just completely pull out. Historically, Bitcoin prices have been seen a multifold jump in price before having following the 2022, uh, 2012 halving. The price of Bitcoin increased by around 9K to 1162. After the 2016 halving, the price of Bitcoin increased by around 4,200 4, to 19,800. After the 2020 halving, the price of Bitcoin increased by almost 683% to 69,000. So there's diminishing returns, but I think like this time, because of the ETFs, maybe the diminishment won't be so much. And um, I do think we'll get like, you know, like from the bottom, we'll probably get like at least five or six X. Thus, miners have remained profitable despite fears of going out of business. So each time the miners have come close to going out of business, uh, something has actually come up and have allowed them to stay profitable. But I don't think that's going to change just yet. I think eventually Bitcoin's like having system will actually get a lot of people out of the game and mining will come down because they just can't really uh, adjust to the price that they have to be at to match Bitcoin costs. But I don't think we're quite there yet. I think we're pretty far away from that point yet. So I'm not really that afraid of that. But um, maybe it'll happen in 10, 15, 10 to 15 years. But right now, um, I do think it's much more likely that Bitcoin price goes up above 80,000. Now, there could be a slight dump after the halving as a couple of miners shut down their systems and mining's not as much. But I still don't think the average cost will fall below like 60, 70K in that regards. So you're always going to have like um, a good chunk of price, at least 65K or so. That's not too much lower than it is right now to actually buy after the halving. So I don't think the price will go that low. So if you're looking to DC at a much, much lower price, like 50K, I highly doubt that's going to happen. And you're basically risk missing out on prices of 80K, 90K, 100K or more. And I do believe we will hit 100K this summer at least. There are definitely fears of like a ha post having dump, but even if there is one, I don't think it'll be that severe. I think it'll be 10, 15, 20% 
at the most. And since you're starting at 80K, you're maybe looking at like 64K as that dump. So I would actually start to DCA in right now if you haven't DCA in yet. The SEC Commissioner Hester Pierce has blasted the SEC again, and their chief legal officer is trying to make up for the criticism, saying the SEC has indeed been consistent in its policies, which they obviously haven't been in. I think it's getting harder for uh, him to actually like defend the SEC more and more because like the whole situation with Ethereum and Ethereum Gate really affects the entire crypto industry. And people can tell the SEC is not being genuine by trying everything in their power to not actually mention Ethereum when bringing this stuff up. And people are just seeing that they're actually being quite hypocritical at this point. And they are just making up rules as they go along. So uh, there was an SEC Speaks conference and Hester Pierce said that a particularly pernicious weed has sprung up in the SEC's Green Garden Policy Guidelines. And they're talking about SAB 121, which prevents banks from custody in crypto. This one has actually um, caused the SEC a lot of headache because there are a lot of banks that are lobbying against it and those banks have a lot of power. So I think eventually this is going to fall. Now, like one by one as these obstacles fall, like opponents of crypto like Elizabeth Warren, Brad Sherman are getting less and less happy, obviously. But that makes us more and more happy at the same time. Uh, of course, like the SEC enforcement officer is going to claim that companies in the crypto industry had made many creative attempts to avoid commission's jurisdiction by continuing to operate in the United States. But there is nothing saying, especially for exchanges, that those coins are actually securities on the secondary market. In fact, Coinbase's recent win against the class action lawsuit actually goes against that standard. So the SEC is currently soliciting comments to whether they should ex accept the Ethereum ETF or not. I'm not really sure if they ever really listen to those comments, honestly. Um, but I don't think they're going to allow the Ethereum ETF right now, but they are going to allow it through sooner or later because I feel like they're just really trying to peg Ethereum as not a security right now. And they know that if they fight that case, a lot of bad stuff might come out about the SEC. So they're not really willing to fight that case. But there's liaisons and cracks within their own agency as two of the commissioners do not agree with Gary Gensler's kind of like Gary Gensler's opinion and the commission's overall opinion right now. So right now there's a split, the pretty big split within the agency. And right now, a lot of the votes are 3-2 uh, instead of 5-0. Oh. So that makes it harder for Gary Gensler, much, much harder for Gensler to argue his stance. So the more ruckus and trouble that Hester uh, Pierce brings up on, like, really good assertions, I think, uh, of, like, you know, what the SEC is doing, the harder it becomes for Gary Gensler and co. to really defend their position. And I think the walls are starting to cave in at this point. And if you're um, invested in Maker, you might want to be careful about this because a big Maker whale, known by short dress OXA09, deposited 1,488 Maker that's worth $5.43 million to Binance at a price of 3,652. He has about 20% profit over what he bought at a month ago on both COW protocol and Binance. And if you move all your coins to Binance, that might consolidate in a fairly big dump. Now, 5.43 million, if it was Bitcoin or Ethereum, it wouldn't really be much. But for Maker, I think that represents a significant amount that can temporarily affect price. Not permanently, obviously, but temporarily affect price. So you might see a drop for Maker. Um, and if you see that, I wouldn't get too uh, worried because if the whale finishes dumping, it, it should mitigate and go back up. But just so if you're interested, in, if you're uh, invested in Maker, um, that might actually be happening right now. So a big whale might be dumping, dumping all his altcoins for Maker. Right now, there's a lot of base meme coins like Touchy Mochi and others. I think they might actually gain a lot of vitality right now because of Solana's issues right now. Obviously, when Solana fixes their issues, I still think a lot of people are going to use SOL. But at least during this time, they're going to look for new chains to operate on. And Base does have enough liquidity and meme coins uh, for them to actually rotate into. So right now, like if you're looking for a new chain to get in with a lot of opportunity, Base is that chain. Now, obviously, Base does not 
have a coin, so it might be tough, kind of hard for you guys. But I would just go on Coinbase and buy some of the coins that are on base, and then you can just you know transfer them directly to your MetaMask wallet and trade on Base Network that way. If you're looking for a new meme coin chain, Base is it for right now. Now, will Base always be free of trouble? Probably not. We've seen Base like actually up their fees um, when uh, transactions got busy, but right now they're not in the Solana status. So you can actually trade pretty easily at this point. So if you're looking for a successor to Solana at this point, base might be it at least temporarily. So that's the news for today. Let me know what you think. Like and subscribe, hit that bell notifications button. Thank you and have a nice day.